Welcome back to our Ask a Knitter series, where I answer some common questions that I get asked in classes from knitters. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at circular yoke construction. It's something that's been really popular over the last few years, but it is a little tricky to modify and figure out how best to actually make it so that every part of it fits you well. So today we're gonna to take a look at a couple of different examples of the construction and different things that you can do so that you're really happy with the fit when you come out the other side. If you're enjoying this series, please do make sure you subscribe. But for now, let's come on in and get started with that answer. Circular yoke is, can be started from the top down or the bottom up but you're going to have a neck like this. Then if it's top down, you're going to have a yoke that is shaped by a series of increase circles. So you'll start with them spaced very close together, usually every two stitches or so, then moving to every three stitches, and then possibly by the time you reach the last few, it's spaced out a lot further and Generally, you may have one more where there's going to be, it's very widely spaced, but it's just kind of picking up the, the last few increases you might want. So when you reach the bottom of the yoke then, the sleeves will be separated out and usually some underarm stitches added. So there's that sleeve there. And then the body is separated out like this. So you've got the underarms in here and all of those circular increases all the way around. If you're doing a bottom up, you'll do your body up to there, you'll do your sleeves up to here, and then you will join them all together and these will be decrease rounds rather than increase rounds because it's going to look the same just in the opposite direction. So let's take a look at some of the challenges of designing with something like this or knitting something like this and different ways you can modify it. So now you know the basic construction of a circular yoke and how it fits together. Here are a couple examples that I've knit over the last few years. This is the Umore sweater, top down circular yoke with some color work. And this one is Uluk. So it has stripes, but it's actually got some cables rather than color work working around the yoke. Now, the main reason people would end up designing or you knitting circular yokes is because it's kind of ideal for doing big bands of interesting pattern, either color work or cables or anything around the circle because the, all of the increases kind of confined to rounds on, around it. And in between, you've got these nice big stretches where you get to do color work or other, or other interesting patterns without being interrupted. So that, that really is the biggest advantage. And it's also, it's a fairly straightforward construction type because on the rounds that you're doing the increases, you really need to focus to make sure you get it right. But then the rest of it, you can kind of freewheel along fairly happily. When I first started designing them, the kind of problems I was encountering were in relation to the neckline and getting it to fit well. So if you've done top down, rag, uh, top down uh, circular yoke, you'll know that you need to do some form of short row shaping across the back to raise the back up relative to the front, because otherwise the front will be the same height as the back. And what that's going to feel like is the front will kind of feel a bit confining and uncomfortable and the back of your neck will actually feel a bit cold. So I personally like the back of my neck covered. I do not like that cold feeling across there. So short rows are absolutely essential for that. So that's the way, the places you're going to put short rows in. Let me turn her around here. You can see, you see how wide this section is here on the color band. There's a couple of inches here. And then if I turn it around, it is not even an inch on this side. So that's because the short rows work back and forth. And in this one, it actually more or less, let me pull this forward. It more or less shapes the neck as well because it comes, you can see it comes all the way around here. So it almost forms a little bit of leg shaping because the narrowest one will be here and then it works its way back across here. So it starts at narrow and it works its way out. Now, if you did that much extra knitting and you had no increases, which is the way when I started doing it, first of all, I was doing it, what ends up happening is it forms a tube rather than a cone because our shoulders, they move out very quickly, which means that you want the increases to happen very fast so it will sit down because if you're knitting this cone for this construction type, it's going to sit wherever the point that it fits is on the body. So if I had basically a, 
a construction where I didn't do any increases, then by the time I did the increases, it would be sitting like this, and this part would sit up like this. So has that happened to you? Because I mean, I, that was how I first encountered the problem, was if I don't have increases while I'm doing those short rows back and forth, it sits up. This whole part just kind of sits like a funnel from the top of the neck. It's really unattractive and it is not very comfortable. So you can fix that by working increases across the back here, back and forth here while you're doing the short rows. That means that this can sit down and it'll sit at the place where it comfortably fits and it's going to slide down the body. Same thing with this one. Those increases worked across the back at the same time that the short rows were worked. Now, in terms of short rows, generally speaking, it's going to be up here. But if you don't want it all up there, you can also actually add some in down here. Same thing, you just have come across here working a little wider at the back. So it's going to push it up. You want to make sure though it happens before the shoulders are separated because the shoulders will kind of lock this in place here to here. And then that part will get pushed up with the short rows across back here. So you could also even do a combination, have a few of them up here and then a few of them down here. It's a little bit also like the increases across there. When you're coming down, if the increases don't happen quickly enough, you will end up with the sleeves constricted across here, or you will also have it potentially where it's so tight that this part kind of sits up like this and doesn't lie correctly on the body. So that happens if the increases aren't quickly enough. So what happened the first time I designed this you more is, or rather not designed it, knit it, the first part of the chart here has no increases. And then I thought I could just cheat and just continue on with no increases. It didn't work. <laughs> it looked terrible, it fit terrible, and was very uncomfortable. So I ripped up to halfway, and then I redid the chart, working a couple of increase rounds into it. And you can see how it actually, it sits down on the body really well because the increases are all happening nice and smoothly down there. So that's, they're the kind of the biggest problems in terms of fit up with across the top here. The other problem that people sometimes encounter is because of the fact that you've got all these increase rounds and then they'll finish around here and you've got, you may end up with fabric puckering across the front here. There is not always a way to avoid that, but one of the things that I've seen people do that will help, first of all, making sure you've got increases across the underarm. So some of the extra stitches are taken in there and that the sleeve fits in around a little bit more naturally around, that does help. Or alternatively, taking some of those final increase rounds and working them as raglan so that it kind of fits in a little bit better down there. So those kind of things will help. You might also want to take a look at the actual sizing and checking that you are putting it so oversized so there's a huge amount of extra fabric. So that's probably worthwhile as well. Tied with that, you could also have it where if your bust size is a lot larger than the rest of your body, but that you're, if you're fairly petite but with a larger bust, what you could even try doing is doing a little bit uneven in the, in the stitches. So when you divide the sleeves, normally it's even. So we'll say 100 stitches in the front, 100 in the back, and perhaps 50 for each sleeve. But that might actually give you too much fabric on the back or a little bit and kind of a little bit tight on the front. But you could actually play around with that and perhaps take 10 of those stitches from the back and add them to the front so that you had 90 on the back and 110 on the front. And that's going to give you a little bit more stitches on the front and perhaps a little less bagginess on the back. It's not going to be necessary for every body shape because of course every body is going to fit a garment differently. You need to measure each part of yourself to make sure that you basically, you know where you're going to need extra stitches, you're going to know where you need less stitches, you're going to know where you need to adjust height and things like that. But this is something that I have encountered with knitters before is just the worry about this here and also at the actual front because you can see it tends to be, you, you don't want to have this too fitted because it is not a very forgiving, it's not a very forgiving style for fitting because it's just, it's got, it, it, because all of those increased rounds are so, uh, in such big blocks, that you kind of need to go a little bit oversized or a little bit more generous with this, particularly if you're doing it with a heavier fabric. Another possibility if you needed extra increases in the front is just to start introducing darts across the top here 
or perhaps add some short rows across the front um, and the bust back and forth. So there's a few different ways if you need more room with the bust to be able to modify it as you go along. I've also had some knitters ask if their shoulders are, are much narrower relative to the bust. And what they've ended up doing sometimes is starting with a smaller size in the top here and then changing some of the final increase rounds so that they're adding more increases in because normally this starts slowing down but if you want to accommodate a larger bust relative to your shoulders you can actually just add some of those increases back in across here and get to the bust size that you want but without starting with the wider shoulder at the top so start by measuring yourself checking all of the dimensions on the schematic and figuring out where you need to make those changes so that it's going to fit you as well as possible I hope you enjoyed today's video in our Ask a Knitter series. If you want to follow along and watch all the videos in this series, make sure you subscribe. Coming up next is the video all about raglan shoulder construction. So watch on if you want to see the next video and thank you for watching today.